Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're talking about where the market went this past week, where we think the market's going this coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. So if you trade that, you'll definitely want to subscribe. It's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. Lots of trial and error, lots of lessons learned, lots of courses taken, and lots of pain. But over time, I became profitable, and I believe you will if you're not yet already. So without further ado, let's dive in the charts. I'm taking a look at NASDAQ on the daily chart. And we saw that on Thursday, we had this push up and massive rejection down. And then a lot of people thought that we would have continuation. But then Friday, we had a big squeeze back up. So same idea on ES, but ES is giving a potential hint. You can see right here, Thursday, we broke the most recent swing low. I said in previous videos, there's absolutely no reason to short ES because we've just been making consistent higher swing lows. Swing low here, higher swing low here, higher swing low here, higher swing low here. First time potentially breaking, we broke this swing low. Now, the only thing that I don't like about this is that this, this single bar broke all the highs and it broke all the lows. But I like how it closed near the lows. And Friday, potentially just a retracement back up before we continue to the downside. So now, I actually did short ES at uh, 4600, uh, 4604 to be exact. So I got in a short at 4604, and I'm just gonna put my stop loss uh, just above 4636 because the risk reward is just too good. So I did get in that short there, and let's just bring it down to the four hour and then the one hour so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Make sure you subscribe for more videos just like this. I post two videos a week on the market, giving you market updates and thought process behind those trades. So if you appreciate that, it would mean the world to me if you just subscribe, join the journey, give the video a thumbs up. On the four hour chart here, you can see we have a swing low. We make an, another higher swing low more higher swing lows, but then we broke the swing low and we pushed up and we just had a retracement from the high. So I like to personally build shorts anywhere from 46.20 to about 45.95. And first target being the swing low we just made at 45.50, but my actual ultimate target is to take out these lows. So to come down to about 45.27, that's gonna be my target. Why? Because this broke the most recent swing low. If we're just retracing and we want to take out another swing low, where's the next swing low? This one right here. So liquidity wise, if I'm in that short, which I am 4604, then my stop is above the recent high. It's a nice tight stop. And then TP, first one obviously being the most recent low we, we uh, set there, but then ultimate TP down here at 4527. So we're looking at a, a solid 2.3 to one R. And if you just draw a fib retracement, you can see that from, from high to low, we came up into the 70% uh, fib retracement, but we closed at the 618. So this is a great risk reward in my opinion. And this, you know, this looks like potentially this short could, could work and it could play out. So that's the short I'm in on ES and uh, on NASDAQ, I'm just looking for intraday trades. I mean, let me know if you have any questions about this. This is just basic market structure. And this is what I'm in for my swing account, targeting these recent lows here at about 45.26. I think we'll get there at some point early August and then potentially cycle back up and take out these highs. NASDAQ is a little different though. Reason why there's not as good of a short setup here is because if you see, we had that big sell off Thursday, but it couldn't take out this swing low. So because of that, this could have been a higher swing low. And on NASDAQ, we could actually be targeting uh, 16,060 before more downside. So, you know, it's a different story on NASDAQ. I do have this fair value gap. I did think that eventually we will get down here at about 15,400. So, you know, if you also thought that, then great short opportunity right now uh, at the uh, 15,850. Stop just being above all the highs at uh, 16,060. And then TP will be, first TP will be below this swing low right here. It's 1.6 R uh, or just into the fair value gap here for about a two to one R. So this is another trade set up on NASDAQ. But again, I don't like that if you go to the four hour, you know, right now we're still respecting it, but we're so close to breaking this four hour lower high that, you know, once we, you know, if we do break that and we get above 15,900, I wouldn't be as confident that would be going to the downside because this is technically a bullish market structure shift, right? And then it would imply that we are heading for 16,060, 16,070, 
for more, any b before any more downside. Be more confident in longs after we broke 15,900 and then retraced. This is what I would look for. Let's I would say that maybe Monday we break 15,900. Then I would say, okay, let's look for a retracement about 50% from the low to the high. That would probably be about 15,750. Maybe pull back into 15,750. Then I would look to get into long at about 15,750. Stop being below the most recent four hour swing low and then TP would be above all the highs. So if you're looking for longs on NASDAQ, I would wait for something like this to play out. I said in the previous video that once the VIX pushes up like that, it usually gets sold back down, but VIX is coming down to support and we've been holding the support. Like I said, we've been going sideways in the VIX as we've been going up in the market and that's usually a red flag saying that there's gonna be a sell-off coming soon. So the question is, maybe we just back test this, we go a little higher on ES and NASDAQ and then we actually turn back down uh, on ES and NASDAQ while VIX pushes back up. Because remember, VIX and the market is an inverse relationship, so as VIX goes up, the rest may go down. The last video I made, the dollar was here at 100.6, and I said, hey, maybe it pulls back and breaks these highs. If it does, then I'll have more confidence that we come up here and test 103.6, and it's looking like that. So because of that, I am more confident that there will be a, a possible correction in S&P 500 and NASDAQ anywhere between know, two to five percent on those two two things because the dollar is likely to push up to 103.6. That's a pretty big move on the dollar. And like I said in previous videos, the dollar and, and NASDAQ and ES are inverse. So as the dollar goes up, typically those markets go down. PC is put to call ratio and it's been climbing. So it's been steadily climbing and, and that's something that's interesting to note. No real massive spikes. It just means that people are building shorts, but it's not it's not extreme. And because of that, this could be a precursor saying that, hey, people are trying to build for the downside because there's likely a move to the downside coming. When we get days where it's like a big spike like this, like let's say in one day we go up a lot, 30%, it typically means that too many people rushed into puts and then they get short squeezed. Like on a day here, uh, July 20th, you'll see that after July 20th, we had an up day. But since we've been kind of slowly building on the put to call ratio, it makes me think that we will actually have some downside and it's not just like a one-off thing where everyone's flooding and rushing into puts and then there's a short squeeze. So. That's just another thing, another little tip that I have been following that's been helping. Last thing I want to cover is the 10 year and the two year. So as the 10 year and the two year increase, typically uh, S&P 500 and NASDAQ have been decreasing. So we have found this uh, higher low in my opinion and are pushing up in the 10 year. And because of that, we could have more strain on NASDAQ and ES. So this is currently the trade I'm in on ES. I am in that short at 46.04, stop being it's nice and tight right uh, at uh, 4638 and then TP down here at 4527. So we're gonna watch and see how this one plays out. NASDAQ, I'm just watching intraday, I'll look for longs, but um, I am noting this fair value gap here and I am expecting price to trade back down here. Um, the question is when. Right now, this kind of looks bullish because it looks like we're forming a, a bottom here and possibly taking out the 16,060 before coming down to 15,400. But, you know, it's anyone's guess with this right now. There's more of a clue on ES and same thing on the Dow because the Dow did the same idea. There's a swing low here. We pushed up and we broke below and then we're kind of just trading back into resistance to the left. So on the Dow, uh, you know, this one has a really good risk reward because we went up so much. A real tight trade. I don't, I don't trade the Dow, so I'm not going to be in this on US 30, but you could easily look for a good 2.4 to 1R, stop change just being above the highs, and then start targeting these fair value gaps here. And there's also um, resistance that turns into potential support here because of a lot of trading. So could be a balance level here, but that's just a simple trade on the Dow, but uh, I'm not gonna trade that. So that's gonna conclude this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Look up for my next video coming out Wednesday night or Thursday morning. Have a great beginning of your week, and I'll see you in the next video.